it's a very long story, so I will put it in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, growing up as a young lady, I was subjected to the absence of my father. Mm-hmm. He was not in my life as much as he should, I believe he should have been. Uh, I'm the youngest of five, and he left when I was three years old which means I had no recollection of any time with him, any fun times, any experiences that I've had with him. And so he left me with nothing. And I felt mm-hmm. like it was personal, even though my two, my two brothers and two sisters and I are all his and my mom's, I took it personally because I was the only one with no recollection of any experiences with him. So I felt he left me. Therefore, I grew up bitter and angry because of his absence. Welcome to another episode of What's Up with DJ. I'm your host, DJ. I'm continuing my spotlight on African-American authors for the month of February, which of course is African-American History Month. In the previous weeks, I had conversations with Dr. Charlotte Stokes Manning and Dr. Rose Marie Downer. And in those episodes, we focused on forgiveness and why forgiveness is essential to anyone's spiritual toolbox but this week we turn our focus on etiquette and yeah that's right etiquette so etiquette expert jackie vernon thompson will tell us why etiquette is so important and be sure to join us next week we'll be discussing the fire movement which means financial independent retire early and you'll learn about author you'll learn how author Corey Ann Holmes became financially independent by downsizing to a tiny home. I wonder what's that like? And I may find out. So, but don't forget to subscribe, uh, follow, and like, comment, and review the show on podcast, on Apple Podcast. Your thoughts, opinions, comments are always encouraged and appreciated. And with that being said, let's get right into the show. My guest this week is Jackie Vernon Thompson. Jackie is a certified etiquette expert, consultant, author, and community leader. She has earned a Bachelor of Science degree in communication. Her book, Transformative Etiquette, A Guide to Love and Refining Self, can be purchased on Amazon.com. Her book will give you access to becoming someone people enjoy having in their presence. You will learn how to feel completely confident when dining, interacting, conversing, working, or socializing with others. She's also the founder of the From the Inside Out School of Etiquette, where she conducts classes virtually and in person for families, school, churches, community events, and businesses for children and adults. She teaches a plethora of topics, including business etiquette, chivalry protocols for men and boys, American and European table manners. I didn't know there was two separate things. (laughs) (laughs) Effective communication, body positivity, and so much more. Jackie has dedicated her life to preparing others for success. She's a philanthropist at heart. She founded the nonprofit Youth Empowerment Village. Mm-hmm. Incorporated, where which offers free summer programs for children ages 10 through 17. They learn entrepreneurship, professionalism, public speaking, and proper etiquette. Jackie is passionate about changing people's lives through etiquette. She facilitates a five week masterclass course to educate and certify aspiring etiquette consultants globally. She believes regardless of who you are or where you're from, you deserve the finer things in life. You deserve to be perceived as one of quality as and you deserve to be valued and loved. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. 
Yes. So how long have you been doing, uh, been teaching etiquette? Well, it's been eight years now and counting, and I'm excited about it as if it were the first, it was the first day. Yes, yes. Well, I took a etiquette, um, well, in home ec in high school, I took a class for, um, to, it was some components of this home etiquette. They kind of taught us how to, to, to sit at the table and how to sort of cut our food <laughs> and things like that. I remember taking that as well. <laughs> was it helpful to you? It was helpful to me in middle school, but I must give uh, credit to my mom who definitely elaborated on all of those lessons and mm. took it to another level and taught us all her three girls how to cook and how to do all of those things. Yes. Mm. So uh, to me, I, what I took from that class, I think I got like, remember one lesson. One lesson was that when you have a, you know, a steak in front of you, <laughs> when you're chopping it up or cutting it up, you sort of, you know, doing three pieces, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, that's, that's, I think that's all that I remember from, um, from that class. Yes. I mean, in home ec, I also learned how to sew, mm -hmm. you know, how, how to sew a button and just, just the basics of sewing. So it was like survival classes we had back in those days. Unfortunately, mm. they don't have them anymore unless it's um, in like a private or specialty class. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, I heard of that. You know, I graduated in 96. So um, I'm sure I probably one of the lucky ones that, and all, I mean, too much. I took the class because I just wanted to know more about a little bit about everything. But most guys in that class, they, they took the class because they was going to try to find a girl to date. <laughs> it was just a way to pick up girls. <laughs> that, they had an agenda. <laughs> yeah, they had an agenda, you know. I'm like, I'm here actually to learn something, guys. I'm here to learn something. So um, so why is etiquette, um, so what, what is etiquette and why should we care about etiquette? Great question. Allow me to share my basic definition of etiquette from all the research I've done and all of the Webster's Dictionary's definition. I like to make it very simple for my students, especially uh, elementary, middle school students. Proper etiquette is conducting yourself in a way that doesn't offend others. Mm -hmm. So everything you do you will consider how is it going to impact that person or those people? How is it going to affect them? If I were to use profanity in public, will it offend someone? Because uh -huh. everybody's not okay with profanity. Everybody's not okay with the F word, or B word, and so forth. So we have to be very conscious of our behavior. And when you're interested in expressing or demonstrating proper etiquette, you are conscious of your behavior. You're conscious of your entire conduct in all environments. And etiquette is very important because society needs it. Mm -hmm. We are in such disarray and etiquette allows you to care about the person next to you or to care about the folks in your environment. And it allows you to demonstrate civility, which is pretty much caring about the other human being, your fellow human being. Yeah, civility. To me, that's a, a good word. You know, I think I think a civility, I think that, you know, how we should interact to keep each other sane, <laughs> you know? Yes. Because instead of society going into a certain dis dis disarray, Yes. And um, not only that, DJ, it allows you to set boundaries and it allows folks to respect boundaries. Uh -huh. Proper etiquette does that. It says, OK, this is as far as you can go, not necessarily physically. Sometimes it could be in a social environment. Sometimes it could be what what you should say or what you should do. It sets boundaries and we all need boundaries so that we won't offend each other and encroach on each other's personal space or personal business or experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. To me, I, I would like to get you a book and, and, and give it to a few people <laughs> because hey, I mean, I need know. it. But they, but, you know, a few people I know need it as well, you know, and I think it was, it's always a situation where we feel like um, 
you know, how should I approach this situation? And I think it's good to know that there is some coaching out there to make people feel more comfortable, which we'll get into that um, in this interview about um, our comfort levels and being in a diverse environment or an environment where you're the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to just know what made you want to become an etiquette expert? Wonderful question. It's a very long story, so I will put it in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, growing up as a young lady, I was subjected to the absence of my father. Mm-hmm. He was not in my life as much as he should, I believe he should have been. Uh, I'm the youngest of five, and he left when I was three years old which means I had no recollection of any time with him, any fun times, any experiences that I've had with him. And so he left me with nothing. And I felt Mm. like it was personal, even though my two, my two brothers and two sisters and I are all his and my mom's. I took it personally because I was the only one with no recollection of any Mm -hmm. experiences with him. So I felt he left me. Therefore, I grew up bitter and angry because of his absence. Now, mind you, we would talk like every six or eight months or something, nothing Mm -hmm. significant because we were estranged. And so as an adult, I just pretty much became tired of the anger, tired of the bitterness, because every decision I made in my life was surrounded by the way I felt about my dad. Mm. I was surrounded by that feeling of abandonment and anger. So I got to the point well into my adulthood that I needed to let go of this anger because it was, I was entrapped. Okay. Mm. So, um, I decided that it was time to let it go. It was very difficult. Uh, There's one thing in the book that I really don't want to give away, but I experienced something that helped me to forgive him. It was a very profound experience, one I did not know I needed, but it helped me to forgive my dad. And it allowed me to forgive him without expectation Mm -hmm. and to forgive him just organically. So now, as a result of that, making a long story short, we have a wonderful relationship. Mm. I'm, I'm now able to get to know my father for who he is and not for who I think he should be. And that's a huge lesson for me. By forgiving my dad, It freed me to now be able to walk into my purpose. Mm. I started mentoring girls who were growing up without their father or their mother, because we do have some moms who, for whatever reason, are not, not in their children's lives. So I started mentoring girls, teaching them how to love themselves, teaching them how to be ladies, teaching them how to forgive their parent. And by doing that, eventually one day God just said it was time to take it to another level. And I go into detail in the book with that experience as well. Um, So by God telling me it is time to go to another level with this thing that I'm doing, I did not really connect etiquette without what I was doing. I was simply helping these girls to be stronger, to love themselves in spite of what's happening. And so when God revealed that to me, I shared it with my husband. He said, let's do it. And that was eight years ago. And here Mm. I am now. Mm. So this is, um, this will air in the month of February for, um, for African American history. And this month I am doing um, each episode will be about will be showcasing an African-American author. And ironically, each author has been an African-American woman and each woman that's going to be on this um, on the platform on the on the podcast this month. Um, it's talking about forgiveness and in and, and some way, you know, uh, one author, her book is named Forgiveness. Another woman is about her, her, her book is named Forgive. 
Um, and your book, even though it's not named Forgive, but the 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 quotes of it really is about forgiveness and how forgiveness frees you up. And in your case, like forgiveness allow you to hear what your calling was. Like you sort of had an idea about what it was, but it said the forgiveness opened up a space for you to to sort of express it and fulfill it in a way. Well, you know, the thing is, I had no idea what my purpose was. Mm, or okay. I had no idea. All I was doing was just trying to help our young ladies to get through the pain that I experienced and to love themselves. So I had no clue of my purpose. I wasn't even there yet. I was simply trying to get through each day because I was angry. And I, at the drop of a dime, I was crying. Mm. Somebody asked me, have you spoken with, you, with your dad? I can't even answer. I'm crying because I was so broken. So I wanted to make sure that the girls whom I had access to did not experience that. No more will they experience that. So it wasn't about walking in my purpose. It was about just helping people. And when I was freed due to forgiveness, I started saying, okay, there's more for me to do, God. Uh-huh. Now it's time. I need you to fulfill, to share my purpose with me. And that is when he shared it. When I became hungry to know my purpose uh-huh. and when I was free of the bitterness and anger because I housed that in my heart. So there was no way God could reveal really what he created me to do. I was preoccupied with all of this negative. So uh-huh. that's why when I forgave him, he said, okay, now it's time for your purpose. Mm, so really, that, that really speaks to that your unwillingness to forgive really shut off a piece of, well, not a piece, I think for you, the whole thing in terms of what your calling was and what you was ultimately going to fulfill. Absolutely. That's pretty powerful. It really, it really speaks to how, I mean, how forgiveness really can block your blessing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. No so, one can say that it won't, <laughs> because mm-hmm. you know, without making it all about spirituality. But at the end of the day, we are spiritual human beings, mm-hmm. and in order for God to really use you, you've got to be rid of that stuff. That's Contrary to him and mm. contrary to his character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's bitter, bitterness and hate for me. Ooh, yeah. A woman scorned, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So t- tell me more about how the Holy Spirit gave you, well, you already talked about that already, about how the Holy Spirit gave you this revelation. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that I, I did, the thing that came up to me, that a thought that came to me, because um, speaking with just um, different African American women over the last couple of years, one word has come up. I mean, they haven't said the word themselves, but this, um, but I do see it. It's sort of emerging where conservatism is sort of being brought up in a way um, in a way that's more pronounced than ever. A woman saying, you know, I don't, this this whole Cardi B thing and, and just the, the images that are out there that they sort of like, uh, I had one friend of mine that's sort of, and I, I told her Cardi B's new video, like, I love this song, Walk by Cardi B. She just rolled her eyes and grit her teeth. <laughs> and I wanted to talk, talk about that with you because you are, uh, a, a etiquette coach. So when you see those images out there in the in in you know pop culture, especially of African American women and a person who's teaching etiquette, how do you how does that make you feel? What do you have to say about those images? It kind of makes me want to have a world class <laughs> 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 and just capture every female in society celebrities, our regular everyday folks, and just say, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. It's not okay the way we reveal all of our goods. 
Mm-hmm. It's not okay that your skirt is so short. Mm-hmm. It's like right below your buttocks. That simply says in most cases that she doesn't understand her value. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know her value. And in many cases as well, people, uh, a woman's or a girl's self-esteem is so low. Mm -hmm. She feels she has to reveal herself like that in order to get that attention that she's Mm -hmm. craving. Mm -hmm. And without reverting to what I've said, many girls who did not have a dad Mm -hmm. to say, you're beautiful, you're my baby girl, that kind of stuff. They're looking for that attention through revealing everything. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Their shirt stops here and all of this is their, their, their breast and, you know, all of the things that they wear to draw attention. They just don't understand their value and many are looking for attention. That's not okay if you want to be respected. Now, I say this quite often that every female is not a lady. You have to literally mm. decide that you want to be a lady. Start demonstrating ladylike behavior. Present mm. yourself in a ladylike manner. And of course, the same goes for our guys. Not every guy is a gentleman. It comes down to a decision. So, and I really don't blame this generation for what they're doing. Mm. Because in most cases, they were born into this. However, the older folks, Grandma and them, <laughs> uh-huh. and mom and them, mm-hmm. they did not teach them. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they were too busy or had to work two, three jobs, which mm-hmm. is totally understandable. So their children, many, not all, of course, are left to learn from their peers from um, MTV, MTV or YouTube or whatever. Exactly. So you really can't blame this generation for what they're doing because many were not taught. And that's that's the whole crazy scenario we're in right now. And it is up to the older folks who know better to counteract that. And unfortunately, many are so busy working and making a living for their children. So it's like an unfortunate situation. The children are or the young people are experiencing this just out of control dysfunction. And it is unfortunate that many of our adults don't even have the time to teach and to educate our young men and our young ladies how to be gentlemen and how to be ladies. So they're left to social media. They're left to Facebook when Facebook is not uh, controlling what is displayed. They're left to that. And so they feel, they look at this image. This is what happens. They look at this image of this individual, uh, the Cardi B's and, and so forth. And they're like, oh my gosh, She has like millions of followers. How do I get that? They study these individuals and they try to copy them. But Mm -hmm. one thing I do teach my students, especially my students who are in the increased self-esteem workshop, I teach them that, listen, everybody else is trying to be the best version of themselves, however they believe it. Mm-hmm. If you don't try to be the best version of you and stop trying to be like someone else, you will be wasted because no one can be you. Mm-hmm. Cardi B is being Cardi B. Mm-hmm. Beyonce is being Beyonce. Now, who is going to be DJ? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it kind of like resonate with them. It's, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm like, so stop trying to be like everyone else. Be mm. the best version version of you. Learn as much as you can to be the best version of you. And you shine. Not try to be like someone else because you could never be like someone else. So you could never be right. like anybody else. And they don't realize they have a marketing team behind, a machine behind them, you know, at the same time. And so at the end of the day, if things go well, a lot of times with these pop stars, things don't go well. But if things go well... They're sitting there with their house and their Grammys or whatever. And you're sitting here with, you know, whatever comes of you because you're trying to follow somebody that 
you know, really, I, to me, I like a lot of these celebrities are puns. You know, it's like mm-hmm. they 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 put money behind whoever's hot. So that's the thing that I, so I'm glad we're having this conversation because I think you know people need to hear that, and I like that you put the responsibility, not all of it, but a good portion of it, saying that you know uh, the people who have come before us need to take a step back and look at themselves and say, hey, we need to maybe I did not teach all the lessons in terms of etiquette, teaching um, my children or my people that I I could have spoken to about being the best version of themselves. Maybe I can use your coaching techniques, your etiquette classes to begin doing just that. You know, because yeah. at some point you do have to say, OK, maybe there's a different way because this obviously isn't working. You yes. know, <laughs> <laughs> it's true because I, I have many parents uh, bring their students to their children to me, boys and girls um, of all ages. And of course, the parents come as well and they tell me, Jackie, I don't know what to do. Um, I, I can't figure it out. They won't do this. They won't do that. And so they need a structured way of teaching their children certain things. And that's why they bring them to me. And I have countless parents call me after the fact and just thank me because something clicked for their children Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they are changed. And of course, it's not 100% because it takes time for some of them to really allow it to resonate with them and feel that it definitely can be applied to me. It takes time for some people. Yeah, definitely true. So what are the different kinds of etiquette? Because I, because when I think about etiquette, I think about, you know, choosing the right spoon and the right fork and the right knife, (laughs) but there are different kinds, but you know, it's just speaking with you. I learned that there are different kinds of etiquette. So Mm -hmm. what, what, Yes, and it's so interesting. I giggle at times. Um, Society really feels that there is just table etiquette. That is a myth. Every single thing we do requires proper etiquette. It's just that we don't ask for it or we have no interest in demonstrating it. For example, we have this wonderful uh, opportunity to be on your podcast Mm -hmm. and proper etiquette. The podcast is expected to start at six. Improper etiquette for me is for me to just show up at six o'clock. That is crazy. So that's why I came on like 10 minutes earlier to make sure everything is up to par. The sound and all of that is correct in everything we do. Proper etiquette is required. Even now, as we're in this pandemic, you go over to somebody's house. I don't care if it's grandma, auntie, your parents, your cousins, you're supposed to have your mask on. However, many people go into their family's home without wearing a mask because they feel comfortable. However, they didn't ask the homeowner If it is okay, do you mind? You should never even ask if it is okay to remove your mask because you know that anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways. It's not a matter of different etiquette. It's a matter of just conducting yourself properly in every situation, being considerate of how your behavior is going to affect everyone else. And keep in mind, proper etiquette is in every culture. Mm. The protocols may vary. The protocols may vary, but there is etiquette protocol in every situation, in every culture. Yes. You know, your book covers um, a range of etiquette techniques. And one of the things that I think is definitely valuable is email that you cover. I'm like, thank God, you know, because, um, you know, I, I've I've seen emails that are just I won't say inappropriate, but, you know, someone asks you a question it doesn't require a three paragraph answer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and also one of the things about email etiquette is when, so when you eat people, people, when you, when someone emails you, it, you may have said what you, the answer may be in the fifth or sixth email, but you can also, you know, refer them to, to the piece in the email, the date that you said it, 
or you could be stated in the email somewhere. But sometimes people feel that way. I said it in the email. You're looking like it was three months ago when someone said something. Yeah, that can be kind of rude. Yes, and then point out that I, oh, I did say that, and you're looking like the date, and like this was three months ago. So I think when it comes to etiquette, people do need to understand that there are different kinds of etiquette, and email etiquette is definitely. Um, one that I think that, that we need to just make a standard one in, in school. <laughs> yes. But one thing that you also addressed that I thought was genius was, and I also want to ask a question about that. When you meet someone, uh, say you're, you're a couple and you're meeting another couple and how you should be introducing yourselves. Mm-hmm. I love that what you explained to me in another conversation that we had. Yeah, many people are not conscious of this protocol. It's just, oh, we're just going to meet someone. But of course, if you are a female and you're meeting a couple, you're meeting them, you don't know them, it is appropriate for the female to introduce themselves to the female of the couple first. Mm -hmm. You do not then just go and introduce yourself to the male if you're a female, because that's utter disrespect to the female of the couple. Mm-hmm. She may feel threatened. She may feel that, hmm, get that's my man. rude. She can't get my man. <laughs> okay. So it is appropriate to greet the female first. And at that time, the female will say, oh, this is my husband or this is my boyfriend. Or, this is my coworker," and introduce them to you. And the mm-hmm. same goes for a male. If you're meeting a couple, you would introduce or greet you greet the male of the couple first and allow him to introduce the female. It's, it's, it's kind of common sense. Mm-hmm. Much of etiquette is common sense. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we just don't think. We don't know. And sometimes our nerves with the best of us, I think, with yeah. the internal we don't dialogue. Think that we don't know. Mm-hmm. Now, exactly. let's say if it's say you know, we live in 2022. So let's say that um, there is a couple and they are both a, a same sex couple. How would I introduce who would I decide who would I, you know, introduce myself to and say this is two men who are a couple? How would I select which one to introduce myself to? Well, it's not really your job to try to figure out who plays which role, Mm -hmm. unless you absolutely know. So it's not your job. What you're seeing is you're a male, you see two males, and you introduce yourself to either one because you don't want to offend any anything, anyone. Right, exactly. You see two males, you don't know which role they play. So you just go ahead and introduce yourself to one of them. The other will introduce the other. It's it's really not your position to try to figure out mm. whose role is played. That's yeah. going beyond your boundaries. Uh, exactly. I definitely agree with that totally. Um just you know, just just pick one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. That 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 makes sense to me. I just wanted to be sure, like, okay, you know, in this situation. So what other services do you offer? Wonderful question. <laughs> As you mentioned earlier when you were introducing me, and by the way, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Mm-hmm. I do I do certify individuals worldwide who would like to, um, who aspire to be an etiquette consultant. So we have our five-week classes. It's a master class, and we deal with all things etiquette. Not only do we deal with and uh, work through all of the topics I also teach them how to teach etiquette virtually and in person. Of course, I teach them how to create innovative, fun, and interactive PowerPoint presentations because we have to understand that when you're doing presentations with children, you have to make sure that it's interactive. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that children are stimulated by color and movement and pictures and so forth. So it's not just creating a PowerPoint presentations for some of your topic topics. It's making sure that it keeps my interest and it will keep a, a young person's interest. So 
I teach them all of that. I also teach them how to actually run Zoom, all of the features of Zoom mm. and learn how to smoothly run your classes. So it's a full packed five week class every Monday and, th- and Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m. We meet via Zoom. So we have consultants in Africa, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, um, Canada, the entire USA. We have consultants all over the world. Oh, that's amazing. And like yeah, I said, I'm, 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 you're the first etiquette coach I've met. And I'm like, fine, there's a whole world of etiquette coaches out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we're out there. The wonderful thing, though, is that it's not a saturated industry. So mm-hmm, no. I may be the only full time etiquette consultant within a uh, hundred miles or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And okay. it's good that it's not saturated. So Another it's... thing that we I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. OK. Another aspect of our school is that we provide DVDs, etiquette DVDs. We have an entire series of eight separate etiquette DVDs on eight separate topics hygiene, self-esteem, sitting and walking gracefully, shivery, honoring your body, and the list goes on. Not only do we have the DVDs for those who would like to have them shipped, we have the downloads for those who'd like to have it immediately on their device. So there is no reason, there's no excuse that a person should have saying they cannot access etiquette protocols and all of the lessons necessary because it's there once you know about it it's there we're mm-hmm. also working on providing online classes for each topic i teach in person so you can say okay i'm going to register for that class and begin that self-paced master class by yourself and just keep it going and um, at your pace and it's really cool so mm-hmm. we're working on that. That should launch in March for Women's History Month. And we're mm-hmm. excited about that. Yeah. I, 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 Women's History Month. I didn't know. So March. I didn't I didn't know that March is Women's History Month. History yes. Month. Oh, yes. cool. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm learning a lot from you today. Um, so how? Yes. How can we purchase your book? Great question. Transformative Etiquette, a guide to love and refining self it can be purchased on my website, uh, www.fromtheinsideoutsoe.com backslash order hyphen now or simply go on the website and you'll see the menu item. When you order from my website, you will receive an autographed copy. You can also purchase it from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com, any other place that sells great books. But no, when you order from them, it will come directly from them as my vendor and it won't be autographed. But when you purchase from my website, you will receive an autographed copy. We have ebook, paper book, and hardback book. Okay. Um, so I think you discussed about how to book a class, but just in case they didn't get it, <laughs> how can one book, book a class and become certified themselves as a uh, etiquette coach? Yes, definitely can become certified. How would I, I, I didn't hear that. You asked how uh, would they? How, yeah, how could they book a class? I think you, oh. you said that earlier, but I'm just going to let you say that again. And then also how can they themselves become a certified coach? Okay, wonderful. You can book a class by emailing us uh, info at from the inside out soe.com. We will share our package with you of the long list of topics and description of each. And of course, our credentials, letting you know exactly what we do. And you'll be able to choose from those topics or we have sub packages. So we educate you on what we do and how you can access those packages. And at that point, we schedule them, whether you want want it to be virtual or in person, we do both. If you'd like to be certified, you just head to our website and click Become Certified and register. We will get all the information out to you and prepare you for the next class. We have a class that begins every six weeks. And you will need to know how to interact on a business meeting. You will need to know how to 
construct a proper email. So、um, proper grammar. Proper grammar, exactly. We gotta strike that word "finna" from our vocabulary. Oh my God, "finna!" Ah,、oh, Jesus have mercy, Jesus. "finna," I, "finna." I just, <laughs> you know, you remember that is in my book because that word. <laughs> it's, it's when you say "finna," I forget about any intellectual <laughs> statements you've made before. I, 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 I just, I'm like, okay. I got to put this person over here because I can't allow that person to interact with my client because they might say "finna." Finna is not a word; it places you in a category, and it's not a good category. Instead、uh-huh. of saying "finna," folks, just say "I'm going to." Yes, say, you know, I'm "finna go to the store." I'm going to the store. Right,、uh, right. I, I, because I was a kid, I would hear like I would. I know my when when people said "bathroom." You know where the R, <laughs> they meant bathroom, right? Right. But right. and sometimes these words do like you know one more again means again. <laughs> yeah, but, we're but, shortening but, our words. Right, but then、uh, it's like we, I can't. I'm like as a kid, like I can't. What, what are we? Did that was that derived from something? <laughs> then, uh, I have no idea. Where it came right, from. Okay, right. I can't. I can't trace that back to anything. You know. So I'm just like, okay, I get it. You know, you, you just, you know. Yeah,、so. but we have to. We must、uh, delete that from our vocabulary. We must get rid of that word from our vocabulary and our mind if we want to excel and communicate with anyone at any caliber.、Mm. That is a must. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely am on, on the protest against Fena. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me, and I、uh, appreciate you definitely being here. And、thank、this you transform,、so、you, you're welcome. Transformative etiquette: a guide to love and refining. I refining self. Thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank、I、you for having me. I would love to have you back.